What's up, YouTube? I just want to share some uh, scriptures. I made a comment to this uh, preacher's video. I'm going to send him my book, one of my books, <clears throat> because some of his stuff, it doesn't uh, jive in the scriptures. I'm going to send it free. If anybody wants me to send him a book, I got no problem sending books to people for free. I got no problem at all with that. The thing is, um, I'm going I'm to read some scriptures to you. Acts 19.5 <clears throat> When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They're just very simple, uh, easy under, to understand scriptures, yet there's so many preachers, teachers, prophets, folks. They don't know this stuff. It, it, you know, it's just ridiculous but for you when you're in the presence of these people ask these questions now the scripture i read was acts 19 5 paul just baptized 12 people witnessing on the street he was a street preacher and he baptized these 12 people acts 8 16 for as yet he was fallen upon none of them only they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus um he was talking about the falling of the spirit of the holy ghost upon these people okay they were baptized first notice at pentecost they were baptized with the holy ghost first okay and then they were baptized in jesus name last okay so it can be in different orders it doesn't matter but the uh, the repentance the water the, and the spirit they all have to agree in one thing which is the born again experience the born again process first patterned at Pentecost, first, pour, first poured out at Pentecost, okay? Acts 2.38, that was the whole town of Samaria in Acts 8. Acts 2.38, Peter said, Repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you, for the remission of sins. That's why we do it, born of the water, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, all 11 disciples baptized 3,120 people. And the Holy Ghost fell on all these people as well. It was the 120 in the upper room first, then they, then he preached, and then 3,000, okay? And then everybody got baptized at the same time, okay? Now, Pentecost is where it began, okay? And one question you ask these errant teachers, these errant preachers is, where is Romans 10 salvation in the beginning? See, it doesn't exist. Saul wasn't even Paul yet, okay? He was still the Pharisee Saul, okay? Luke 24, 47, and that repentance, Jesus said this. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. Now, he's talking about his own name. Yet he talks like it's somebody else. That's called talking in third person. You ask these preachers, why did Jesus pre uh, talk in third person? Why didn't he just say it was him? Okay. They're probably not going to be able to answer that because there's no trinity. Okay. To fit the form of their trinity, they have to try to tell you there's three people, which is it's hogwash. It's baloney does not exist it's jesus christ all the scriptures all the prophets all the witness of the bible prove it's jesus christ okay i've got a hundred hundreds of videos on that and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem again where is romans 10 see jesus began this thing at jerusalem acts 2 pentecost records it do you understand so when they tell you Romans 10, you find salvation, you say, no. No, it doesn't say that, preacher. See, they're trying to deceive you. There's either demons in them, or they're just bald-faced liars, or they don't know. Okay? Or it's a combination of the three. Okay? But you have to understand this if you plan on going to heaven. Do you want to be raptured? Or you just want to be a religious person going to hell? I don't want to be a religious person going to hell. Um, twenty uh, Luke twenty four forty eight, Jesus again, and these, and ye are witnesses of these things. What are they witnessing? They're witnessing the repentance. Let me let me back 
up one scripture. I'll read it again for you. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. And ye are witnesses of these things. So what are they witnessing? They're witnessing the repentance. Excuse me. They're witnessing the baptism in Jesus' name, which Jesus said will be in my name, in his name. Um, they're witnessing the downpour of the Holy Ghost and all these strange people talking in tongues. My old pastor would say, like a Chinese laundry. <laughs> That's what they're witnessing. The born-again process of Acts 2 Pentecost. The water and the Spirit. Not just repentance like these preachers that are wrong always say. This preacher in particular. He said, oh, if you believe that... At the end of his message uh, a few days ago, he said, oh, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, which the Trinitarians want you to, to believe that and nothing else... They don't want you to know he's the Father. Oh, no, that's another person. They don't want you to know he's the Spirit. Oh, no, that's the... They don't want you to believe that. They want you to believe they're baloney without checking the Scriptures. Okay? And this is what he said. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that you repented, now, oh, you're born again now. You're born again. And then he went in to his uh, song. It was like being seduced. Because he's a good uh, singer. He's a good. He's a great preacher. He's a good preacher. He's a good teacher. He's a good singer. But yet he doesn't have this basic born again message, and he's probably going to the lake of fire. Very sad, folks. Very sad. That's my whole ministry is to to point you to the right direction at, at jump at the beginning. So you don't believe these uh, preachers that are in great error, folks. Okay? Jesus said, John 3, 5. Did he say, oh, you're born again if you believe on the Son and you repent? He didn't say that. He said, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven except you're born again of the water and the Spirit. That's why he began it at Pentecost. And he told you in Luke 24, I already read the scriptures. Do you understand? Pause my video. I go through scriptures pretty quick sometimes. Pause my videos. Go back. Read the scriptures I'm telling you about. Okay? And then watch the videos again. That's how I learned. I would listen over and over and over to these preachers on video, on audio, on CD later. I came to church in the uh, mid, mid 90s. So. Two more scriptures, uh, one more scripture. Matthew 24, 14. Jesus again, and this gospel shall be of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Do you understand? This is the only pattern to get biblically born again. You have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the Trinitarians say. They'll, they'll try to dunk you into titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and say that's good enough. It is not good enough. They're going to send you to the lake of fire where they're going because they're false prophets. You have to understand this stuff. Maybe it's not on purpose they're false, but maybe it is. Some of them are Satanists, but you didn't know that, did you? I know that, but you didn't know that. The Holy Ghost knows that. The Holy Ghost sends preachers to tell people stuff. Do you understand how this works? John 3, 5. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, capital S, being in the Holy Ghost, his own Spirit, the Spirit of the Father, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's why there's an Acts 2 Pentecost pattern to follow, that's why you find it, Paul doing it in Acts 19. You find Philip doing it in Acts 8. You find all 11 disciples doing it in Acts 2 at Pentecost, folks. Do you understand? This is only the beginning that gets you in his kingdom. Okay? So let's get Jesus' name on you through water baptism, and let's get his spirit in you through the infilling of the Holy Ghost. 
Acts 2, 4, as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. He comes in. When he comes in, the sign goes out that you speak in tongues. Paul said, I speak with tongues more than ye all. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Paul lays this exact pattern out of Pentecost. He practices it in Acts 19. He preaches it everywhere. He talks about the Spirit in Galatians 3, 14, that it's the promise of Abraham, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? All this stuff is laid out. I'm writing in my book. My third book is finishing. And uh, I was writing about Moses in the tabernacle yesterday. In my fourth and fifth book, or one of those books, as I'm waiting for the third one to get done, finishing, I'm in the middle of the fourth and fifth right now. And um, this very simple, simple unbelievably simple message from Jesus Christ himself and all the prophets bear witness of this and yet these preachers they still got it wrong and they did it back in Jesus' day it was the church that crucified him if you call the Jews the church the Old Testament church murdered him he's still murdering the prophets folks It's extremely, extremely saddening. Very, very saddening. My video is done, but I don't feel like cutting it off right yet. I'm going to send this man my book called The Trinity Delusion because he is in a delusion. And I'm going to try to wake him up. This was my second book. It's on Amazon if you want it. I get so depressed when I have to sit in church. And I know they're not serving God with their whole heart. You know, it's very depressing. You got to learn how to worship. So I listen to a lot of music. I play music, guitar, drums somewhat mm-hmm. kind of feel like playing drums right now <laughs> Worship, folks. The Father seeketh such. John 4 23. You got to deal with a lot of knuckleheads in church. A lot. This is uncensored. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, no, I'm not saying. Some of they'll try to hurt you. They'll try to kill you. They will try to slander you. It ain't just the world you have to look out for, it's the church. Because a lot of people that Jesus is trying to save, they've got brain damage. And he puts you right in the midst of them. And some of us have uh, lives like Joseph. 
and Job. And King David, before he was king, he had Saul chasing him, trying to murder him. You gotta, you gotta learn how to navigate all this stuff if you're gonna survive. Now, some of you don't know what I'm talking about because your church, you think it's, it's all hunky dory, but it's probably. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going here, but uh, uh, everything's not what it appears to be. If you're in a Trinitarian church, they might have it all together on the outside and even the non-Trinitarians on the outside it might look really good but that's, uh, I'm done talking <laughs> I don't feel good right now all kinds of spiritual things, attacks and you just got to learn how to get through it all but but you don't need this this problem of not being born again and you're sitting in a pew, you're sitting in a church, you're giving these people your money, your time, your talents, your influence because you bring people to them that pay them tithes. And you're not getting the proper gospel most of the time, folks. And and I got a I got a I got a burden for people that have been lied to and deceived by these people. Whether knowingly or unknowingly, it doesn't really matter. Do you understand? You have to be in the scriptures or you're going to be deceived. Do you understand? And you have to have the Spirit of God in you, navigating you through all this terribly rough spiritual terrain where you won't make it. And your faith, Jesus said, I pray that your faith fail not, Peter. Because of the, the testing, the trials, the sifting of Satan. All the things we have to endure, the, the, all the evil. It, it doesn't seem to ever end. But um, somehow we have to uh, get through it. So I encourage you all to be baptized in Jesus' name. I encourage you all to uh, bring these things up to your pastors. And if you see a devil pop up out of their spirit, you better run, run, run out of that church. And you better get on the internet and make some phone calls and try to find a church that at least baptizes in Jesus' name. Say, can I get the Holy Ghost there? If they say, what's that? You need to hang the phone up and don't go there. Find the pattern of Pentecost. That's a good beginning. You, they'll get you born again. After that, it's it's a it's a toss up because they could be brain dead just like the rest of them. There's a lot of people that ain't going to make heaven, and they're on TV, they're on all kind of stuff, social media. You have to understand. You have to learn the Bible. You have to learn these things, or you're going to be deceived. My pre, my pastor, first pastor, he'd always say, "There's so many preachers going to hell, prophets." UPC preachers, Trinitarian preachers, said there there's so many going to hell, and uh, you have to you have to really get a hold of Christ. That's why the, ch the church got semi two. They don't have daily prayer. It's just a carnal mess. It's a show. God shows up. They kick him out sometimes. Sometimes they let him talk through the gifts. Most of the time they quench the spirit. It's just ridiculous. It's like a you know, it's it's sad I, I'm talking about this stuff. You, you know what? Somebody has to talk about it. it. has to change. There has to be repentance. If there's not repentance, what, what good is the church if it's not a uh, repented uh, place where people can contact God? You hear good songs and maybe good preaching and you think that's good enough? No. Less than three weeks ago, the Holy Ghost said, I am grieved. He was talking about that church. He said, I set my witnesses. I think he even mentioned prophets. He said, I've done all these things, this and that, and you have not gone forth. Yet they were all ready to go home. They thought they had a great service. They thought they pleased God that day. And then God drops that the bomb on them at the end. No. 
You think. John 5, 39, Jesus said, You think ye have eternal life. The scriptures are talking about me, he said. Jesus, see, you got to understand this stuff. You're going to be tricked. You have to have much prayer. If the church has, has little prayer, they're playing games with God, and God's probably going to throw them in the lake of fire. Matthew 8, 12. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast in outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is hell, folks. Jesus throws born-again people in hell. Go in Revelation, he talks about how he, he's going to kill their children with death. I mean, see, this stuff is not usually preached. Uh, Matthew seven twenty two, Jesus said many prophets are going to the lake of fire. He's going to throw them there. Do you understand? Born again is the beginning, resisting sin, walking with God, listening to his spirit, doing what he says, not just listening, but doing. The church I go to for 26 years, they've got a great, they can hear, oh, they're the best hearers. And we used to do, and God would actually show up mightily, and, and yet that has been gone for years. Now it's just a show, it's a hearing. It's, it's never a doing Many times I've heard the Holy Ghost come through the, the man preaching, giving a message, giving direction. Only to, and, 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 and I wait for the Monday, for the phone call, or for the direction, or for this or that, to implement what the Holy Ghost just said. And it never, ever comes. So the Holy Ghost moves on me to make videos and messages and texts and give them direction from the Holy Ghost. And nothing. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that stonest the prophets that I sent you. How long will I have gathered you? How many times? As a hand doth gather, and ye would not. That's the problem the Holy Ghost has with the current church. They're not listening. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. He said that, I think, eight times in Revelation. Yesterday, I'm in here. I was doing, I was doing my book, and it, it was a, a reverent spirit. It wasn't quite a spirit of holy fear, but it was right there, and I'm feeling it something right now in the last two minutes of this video. It's from the Holy Ghost. It's another warning. And I was fearful yesterday. I was like, Lord, I'm not comfortable. And I'm doing research for my third book. I think it was my third, my fourth book. I write, I work on them all at the same time. As the Spirit gives me stuff, I write or make videos. <sighs> the upper room, Pentecost, for 10 days, 120, they were in there. They were doing this. They were sitting. They were worshiping. They were whispering prayers, they were praising, they were shouting, they were fasting, they were seeking, they were feeling after the Spirit of God. And that has been utterly lost and abandoned by the church. Yet that is the very lifeline and the very essence of our salvation. Because if you cast that off, leaders, you have no salvation. You'll be cast, the preachers, 722 of Matthew, into the lake of fire. Matthew 8, 12, and the children of the kingdom will be cast in the lake of fire after that. That's what is going to happen. See, now I'm feeling like I need to send this to the leadership, and I'm going to send it. 
25 minute video. I doubt they even get this far and watch it. Not my problem. Not my problem at all. My problem is to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. And we have to deal with the pain. The pain. We have to deal with the pain. As you're reeling in your pain, you might be sitting on your couch. And all the turmoil and all the, the confusion. And, and you know that you don't hear anything from God. You, you know you're doing everything you're supposed to. You're trying to. And yet you got all this junk. That's just part of the territory. You want to quit throwing the towel and see, you know. And you, and you know you can't. There's fellowship and suffering. These gifts are coming out. Last couple of minutes, I sensed it. I didn't know. This video should have ended a long time ago. It's only from the Holy Ghost that it hasn't. I don't think I have one 26 minute video. They usually end early, but uh, this has happened before, but that's all I got. Prayer is paramount if your church is not in prayer. They're playing games that are not gonna, they're making, out making money. They've got businesses. The, the church has become a side hustle. The Holy Ghost showed me this the other day. It's their side hustle. They suck to extract the funds, and it's all for them. They ride off into the sunset. They buy their 40, their back 40 acres. They buy their $600,000 houses. 